Tui, William and I are here to talk about radar detectors today, in particular this one here that I've just installed on my car. But before we get on to this, let's talk about the subject in general, which tends to be a bit of a contentious subject. Like choosing a car brand, everyone's very territorial about their radar detector and laser jammers. So, when we talk about a radar detector, historically we've always talked about those things that sit on the windshield, everyone Josh. knows what those are. <laughs> but they're becoming less and less effective as time goes on. And the reason why they're less effective is because there's some states that don't even allow those to be set on the windshield anymore. But mostly because more and more police enforcement is done with lasers. Uh, and the windshield mount units are very ineffective at uh, detecting lasers. Because lasers by their very nature are very short burst and very accurate burst. Generally a cop using a LADAR unit will aim at the license plate of an oncoming car uh, and that laser signal will only be a few inches wide uh, and it will only be on for a second and by the time it's been activated you've already been caught. So any warning from your windshield mounted unit is often too late. Particularly here in Connecticut and actually most of the Northeast uh, lasers become the most prominent uh, speed enforcement tool that the police use. Uh, I've noted particularly in Massachusetts and New York, whenever I cross into those states, they are waiting for me like a pack of wolves to hunt me down like the dirty dog I am. So something has to be done, and in the past I've always had an integrated radar laser jammer system in my cars. So what is an integrated radar detector and laser jammer system? Well, as the name suggests, it's integrated into the car. It's actually installed on the car instead of on your windshield, and it has many advantages over the historical windshield based units. Of course there are some disadvantages as well, the main one being that you have to go to the expense of installing it and the systems themselves can be very expensive and the one I'm installing is no exception there. And there's no perfect system. You should totally research every system out there before you decide what to buy, particularly when you're spending this sort of money. Um, the escort systems have worked well for me in the past so I'm going to continue using them. This, this latest version um, brings technology that reduces a lot of the false alarms including alarms caused by the lane change assist systems that a lot of cars have. My old 95CI used to alarm a lot from those, this system does not. Um, but this system's far from perfect. And the reason it's actually taken me a year to install a system in my car is because I've been waiting for escort to fix the bugs in this system. Uh, that's right, a lot of people that have already purchased the system have had to change out parts and do a lot of updates to get it working properly. So Escort have got a bit of a checkered past uh, with getting their systems right first time so that's something to consider you know no radar or laser jammer system is perfect you should do the research on what's right for you. And as for how legal are these systems well uh, for your own country you need to do the research yourself but here in the US uh, radar detectors are legal throughout the country um, except for in Virginia and DC as I mentioned, some states don't allow you to mount them on the windshield, but these integrated units are no problem. <laughs> Laser jammers, on the other hand, uh, a number of states have made them illegal. Now, I'm not advocating breaking the law, but me personally and a number of my friends have successfully used the laser jammers in those states that it's illegal without any ramifications. The problems for the police are, is detecting that they've actually been jammed. These more modern units simply send a signal back to the police gun saying they haven't aimed it correctly. And it is very difficult for the police to get the laser beam directly on the car and get a signal back. Um, so a lot of times you can still use these jammers in states that have made them illegal and get away with it. The other way of course is after you've jammed the laser, make sure you turn it off um, because if they do pull you over and say, oh, you did something illegal, you say it was turned off. But of course, this is not legal advice from me. You should do the research yourself and you should use these devices at your own risk. Needless to say, of course, I've had a great deal of success with these integrated radar detector laser jammers. I've had, had them in my cars for 10 years now. And when I've got them in the car, the amount of tickets that I get drops to almost zero. You should of course use them in conjunction with other tools uh, like Waze. Waze I find Waze to be an excellent app uh, for warning you of police that are on the side of the road and so forth. Um, but yeah, the combination of Waze and the integrated radar and laser detector, uh, well, it can never guarantee you never getting a ticket. Uh, it certainly lowers your chances substantially. So we're going to go inside, talk to Eric about installing it, and then I'm going to go through the functions of this particular system, uh, the costs and the advantages and disadvantages of the Escort Max CI. Okay, so today we're going to be installing one of these bad boys. If you look closely on the box here, you can see they you put the radar jammers and the laser detector, and the difference between the uh, Max CI and the 
uh, Max uh, 360 is the 360 has units on the rear of the car as well. I've had uh, 9500 CI in several of my cars and I originally put the units in the back as well but I've never found it's needed. Most times a cop is lasering you, they're lasering from the front because they really can't do it from a moving vehicle so I'm not going to bother with the 360 this time. We're just going to go with the CI. Also on a 911 it can be a little tricky installing it at the back can't it? So this is Eric. Probably remember Eric, he uh, installed the um, dash cam in my 911 and in many other cars <laughs> since then. Uh, he does all sorts of electronic installs. What else do you, go, you do? Remote starters, heated seats, backup cameras, radios. It works. Pretty much. And so you work out of Connecticut, New Jersey, lower New York area? Pretty much anywhere. Yeah. yeah in that area. In that area. So if you are looking to have a, a dash cam or remote starter or a radar detector installed, um, send me an email and I'll pass it on to Eric and uh, he'll do you a good deal. And he, the best part is that he just does a great job. I've, uh, I've worked with Eric for years now and everybody that I know that's worked with Eric has just been so happy with his work. So today, this is a very complex install, isn't it? Um, this will take you a few hours. Yep. Um, but the unit itself is expensive. Um, about 2500 for the unit and then install on top of that. So how much the install cost depends on the car and the complexity of the install. Um, but right now, yeah, the, these are an expensive unit at $2,500. So you really, <laughs> you really got to be getting a lot of speeding tickets to make this worthwhile. Uh, I said in a previous video, I already have my first speeding ticket for the year at uh, 10 minutes past 12 on New Year's. So I want to try and avoid that with this thing. So Eric's going to do the install. We're going to take some video of the install and uh, show you how it fitted into my 911. It's, uh, let's get on with it. Okay, so here's the components. What do we got here, Eric? This is the... That's the radar receiver. Right. This is the shifter and box. And this goes, this, this is, this can go behind it plastic can. and stuff. Yes. Yeah, so this can be hidden. Control for the laser shifters. Right. Where does this go? That goes up underneath the, uh, in the front area of the car. Right. This is These the two are, shifters, right? And this is the cable that connects the shifter box. Let's we take one of these. Oh, so the laser shifters are pretty small, so they're hidden anywhere up under the as high as you can go, isn't it? Really. So you want to mount these in the front of the car as high as possible, right? Right. Yeah. In, in the center line of the vehicle. Yep. Um, equally spaced from the center and equally spaced from the top to the bottom. Right. Ideally. Right. But not every vehicle will allow you to do right. that. And, and that's the, and for the 360 model, you get more of these for the yeah, back or, yeah. There's two more for the back and you can configure it so you have four in the front or two in the front and two in the rear. Oh, I see. And here's the control units. So this is going inside the car somewhere. Yep. And this, is, this is what everything plugs into basically. Wow. And this is the GPS. Yep. GPS is a big feature on this. Um, this is, prevents false warning. So when it sees the same frequency time and again in the same place it just ignores it uh, and this is the one of the big improvements of this new model is it's got a nice color screen which gives more information but yeah this is just an overall uh, big improvement over the previous model um, it's it's a smarter unit with more features probably the biggest one is the k-band filtering oh okay k-band filtering yeah. nice so a lot less false From false vehicles, yeah, yeah nice yeah because that was becoming a big problem with the lane change mm -hmm. radars, isn't monitor, it? Yeah, cruise yeah. control avoidance systems. Yeah, yeah. I noticed that with the uh, 9500 CI, it's getting more and more that it was starting to false alarm. So you don't get that on this model. And of course, the control panel, uh, which you can mount anywhere in your car, basically, which is telling it to to block out false signals, and and this is how you set it all up and mutes and so forth. So that's pretty cool. It's going to look really cool, I think. Um, yeah. I think the standard version is all anyone's ever going to need, but if you want to be absolutely so sure, then the 360 with the, with the rears is probably the way to go. But that's what, another 500 or more, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And a lot more cost installation. Correct. Yeah.
So it took Eric a few hours to get the system installed, but now it's all nicely hidden away in my car. Most of the guts of the system are hidden away. The GPS under the dash, the, uh, the main unit up under here somewhere, speakers and so forth. Externally, all you can see are the laser deflectors on the front under the grills there. And internally, you can see the, uh, the screen up in the corner here and the little control box down here. Now, where you mount the screen and the control box, completely up to you. I've seen people put the screen up here, uh, down here. Uh, a, a popular one these days is actually on the mirror, uh, but I like it up in the corner here. And the reason I like it up in the corner here is, is that it sits in my peripheral vision. So I can have the sound right down because I find radar detectors beeping at me to be highly annoying. So I like to just see what they're doing in it. And I react quicker to, to visual cues than to sound cues as well. So uh, having it as a visual thing works for me. Uh, I guess the only downside of having it up in the corner here is that if I've got my, uh, my, my sun deflector down, I might not be able to see it. But that's really not been a problem. I love it in the corner. Works well for me. But for you, you need to decide where you would, would install these things. So let's um, take a moment to go through the features. I'm not going to take it out on the road today. I'm going to do that in a separate video. I actually have a law enforcement friend um, that does traffic. So he's going to help me produce a video. We're going to have to hide his face and stuff, but uh, we're going to do a video where, um, where he actually fires his uh, laser at me and, uh, and the system deflects it. Uh, but that'll be a little bit further down the road. Today, I just wanted to show you the setup and features of the system. On the little control panel here, uh, you've got six buttons, sensitivity, uh, mute is when it's setting, it's going off and you want to shut it up, you can just hit that. Uh, mark can set a, uh, an alert for different types of things like speed cameras or where a cop always is to always alert you when it sees that location on the GPS. Um, power, obviously you can power the system down if you've just been lasered and they're chasing after you, you want to power it down. Uh, volume of course, just adjust the volume of the alerts. And brightness, uh, adjust the brightness of the... Um, of the screen and you can you can make that automatic but I tend to leave it on maximum all the time and on first so first of all onto the sensitivity button which has four levels of uh, sensitivity uh, highway being its highest detecting everything but what I'll say about these systems with G the built-in GPS is that uh, they're a learning system so as uh, it sees a frequency a false alert in a certain place over and over again it sees it more than twice, it records it in the GPS and it doesn't warn you about it again. Because no cop is going to sit exactly where they are, exactly the same, same frequency every time. So if it sees uh, an alert with a certain frequency, it just blocks it out. Uh, and what, how that works so well for me is that when it actually gives an alert, you know it's a cop. Uh, whereas most of these windshield mounted units without GPS are just going off all the time, so you end up ignoring them. Uh, so that feature is pretty cool. But yeah, sensitivity highway is full power. It's also auto. got auto, which is based on your speed. Auto no X, auto no X uh, which of course is cutting out the X band and working on speed. And my favorite, auto low K. Auto low K. What that's doing is, uh, once again, based on speed, but also um, reducing the sensitivity of the K band, which is where most of the false alarms are these days uh, when you're going at lower speeds. So I like that one. So, into the preferences. Preferences. Uh, so, mode advanced. so, the first uh, one is user mode advanced novice. Every, everyone would just leave this on uh, advanced novice, just prevents you from uh, making changes within the system. It's your system, you should be able to make all the changes you like. Pilot mode, scanning bar. The second one is just a display preference, whether or not. Uh, you want that scanning bar up there. Uh, it's just a cool effect. It doesn't actually do anything. Uh, the color mode, obviously, is just um, what color you want the display, uh, depending on the interior of your car. Uh, red works for me. Speed display on. Speed display is the speed uh, showing here, which is a calibrated uh, GPS speed, which, of course, is useful when you get an alert. You can just look up there and see what type of alert you're getting and how fast you're going. If you don't have the speed display on, it just shows the voltage of the car. Cruise Alert is a new feature for the system. Um, it allows you to set a minimum speed that it gives you loud alerts on. Uh, so if you know you're never going to get a speeding ticket below, say, 35 miles an hour in your area, uh, set it to 35 miles an hour, and if it sees something, it just does a single blip instead of going, nah, 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 going nuts at that speed. So that's a nice uh, annoyance-reducing uh, feature. Meter Options is an interesting one. Um, there's several to be had here. 
Simple, uh, just gives you an alert, doesn't tell you anything more. I doubt anyone would ever use that. Uh, standard gives you a display like you'd see in old, old fashioned radar detectors where it just shows um, the frequency that's being detected plus a meter, a signal strength meter. Uh, spec display is one that a lot of people like to use. Once again, it's like the uh, meter mode, but it shows the actual frequency of the radar that's hitting you or the laser that's hitting you. For those of you that know a lot about these things, um, that can be very useful. The one I like to use is actually expert meter, which can show uh, multiple alerts up there, including directions. Auto learn on, uh, this is a great feature. As I said before, it's basically the feature where it looks detecting something. <laughs> Auto learn is a great feature of course uh, as I said before it's based around the GPS when it sends a, sees a certain frequency in a certain place over and over again it just blocks it out. So it might take a little while for it to auto learn everything in your area it just means that it totally cuts down on the false alerts which is great. And you can turn off and on um, the shifters and various bands if you know you don't have them in your area. Or if you're driving through a state where shifters are illegal, you could turn them off if you wanted to as well. So that's the Escort Max CI installed on my car. As I said, I'll be doing future videos about this, perhaps with a policeman showing a demonstration of how it all works. Um, but in the meantime, I'll give you guys feedback in future videos how it's all coming along. But for most people, this should substantially reduce the number of tickets they get, of course, when used in conjunction with other tools and of course, common sense. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching everyone. Anyone that's interested in getting one of these systems and they live in the New England area, uh, please let me know and I'll put you in touch with Eric and he can uh, give you a quote and install for your car. Uh, really a great system, but there are other systems out there, so remember to research your own systems because this might not be perfect for you. And of course, this is still a very expensive system. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye then.